Thank you so much, everyone. How are you? Hello. Dear Professor Hong Tak Chun, Dean of Kerea School of Public Policy and Management, dear faculty members of Kerea School of Public Policy and Management, dear members of all the Kerea family, thank you so much for your uh, welcoming. I am always uh, privileged by KDI School. And uh, this is uh, my third time to come to Korea, including my study, uh, one year stay in Seoul. Um, Korea is the place where I am educated indoctrinated with uh, principles and uh, economic totals, as well as I am inspired towards determining myself for objectives. I remember distinguished professor Gil Chin Lim, who is, he was a very fantastic person very humble one. He maintained us, really. We were four in number. He is hugging us like that. That picture was taken at his house. Sorry for his uh, pass away. My deep condolences to his family and his colleagues. I'm sorry for that. Anyway, it is the cycle of life. Uh, my presentation, uh, as explained before, focuses on leadership and career advancement, but I tried to organize uh, some sort of presentation, but when I see it at the end, I hate it. I don't think it will uh, inform you some important issues. Anyway, I will present it. So it will not have a sort of analysis, but it provides you raw information about my uh, evolution from uh, rural areas. And then you will see the challenges, the ups and downs I first saw. Mostly I focused on these sides. Then I think you will, you will explain me using this raw information rather than telling or explaining myself from the leadership as well as career advancement as an economist, uh, I prefer to inform you, to provide you the information, and then you will interpret it into meaningful information. I was born in this uh, house. Later, it was uh, developed into this one. I am a typical representative of rural people. I originated from that type of surrounding. And I hope and I believe that the source of my successes and the source of my strengths <coughs> begin from that rural village where hardships are uh, immense. My family, including my uncle and my aunt. In my uh, primary school, I didn't get the chance to pass through kindergarten. Rather, I joined the adult education program at the first instance. Following my mother, I went to a school for adult education in the summertime. We call it summer uh, in July and uh, August. And I attended for two months. And then uh, the coming new year, a uh, new academic year in September, I was uh, allowed to register in uh, grade two. But I failed at grade two. Because the background I obtained from uh, the eldest uh, adult education program was not sufficient. 
for grade two. So I failed that grade two. That's my first experience. And taking the advantage of uh, repeating a grade two, the next year, I passed to grade three and then in the mid uh, term and then uh, to grade four at the end of the year. In general, I completed the primary school six grades within four years with two midterm uh, opportunities of passing from class to class. Yeah, that's all about my primary school. And uh, my secondary school uh, starts from uh, September 1982 and it extends to June 1987. I attended all the classes annually and reached grade 11. In Ethiopia, uh, it was very difficult to join a university at our time. To join a university or to join a college was very tough. So there was a, a habit or a style that students take advantage of repeating grade 11. If you repeat that, you will be strong and you will pass the exam of uh, the Ethiopian School Living Certificate Examination. With us thinking, I repeated grade 11. But uh, mine uh, was uh, not as lucky as the others. My education interrupted there. Um, in 1988, after attending the whole classes of grade 11, I quit taking exams and went back home at the first day of the, the exam, as I mentioned it, with the intention of getting top results and join universities and colleges. But in the subsequent year, that means 1989, um, yeah, I attended grade 11 again. In September 90, I registered for grade 12. That is the last year to complete the high school education. Uh, and uh, I prepared myself excellently, really. I remember that. But uh, what happened after that was really very uh, disappointing. Unavoidable challenges confronted me. October 1990, the civil war was expanded and engulfed our locality, including our school. So guns were fired around the school. So the school was shut down. Our study interrupted. We went back home, that home. I went back, that home. And after a month, from the shutdown of our school, Another heartbreaking grief crushed me and my family. It was due to the death of my father at about 45 years. And I was the first son of the family. I had a strong relationship with my father, so when I lose him, I totally lose myself. It was a very heartbreaking and uh, uh, very crushing, totally for the family. And crying all the way, I was engaged in farming and harvesting activities, despite for a short time. There are Ethiopian students here, they know the lifestyle of Ethiopians. Yeah, the school interrupted, my, I lost my father, I returned back to farming. And uh, still the school is interrupted. I didn't continue my school, my high school. And before completing my secondary school, 
being desperate, I decided two rapid decisions. One, I got married with the influence of our, my family. The intention was you shouldn't go away from this village. You have lost your father. We have lost our father. So we, you have to be amongst us. And you have to organize and lead the family, heading the family. So, projected from uh, my family, uh, I married my wife and started living there with the same house. And after a few months, I joined the armed struggle against the existing uh, socialist regime. And I was assigned as a public uh, wing, mobilizing people, mobilizing users to stand uh, beside our party and uh, struggle against the existing government. So it happened before completing my high school. And before completing my high school, my wife gave me two children. Two children before completing my high school. Now they are here. The one to the right is a nurse now serving people. The one to the left and she is uh, Behaving like a uh, Korean, I don't know what we call this uh, gymnastic, okay? Taekwondo. She has got uh, a green belt. Anyway, they grew through difficult economic situations. Of course, through poverty, within poverty. Now, they uh, passed the, the problems and uh, they are independent. This one is a, a second year economics student in Addis Ababa University. She may be uh, she may be wishing to join K A school. <laughs> Anyways, uh, just to share the difficulties, I passed this through particularly for the youth and for the current students who have a uh, short experience of life. Just my intention is you may learn from my difficult life experiences. That's why I'm presenting this one. So um, how did I complete my high school? That is an impressive and uh, successful story. I didn't attend a formal education or a formal class of great theology. <coughs> Being uh, in a semi-military duty, I applied for a distance education, complete my high school. But the distance school refused me to complete grade 12 in one year. It obliged me to attend grade 12 for two years if it is in a distance program. But I tried to negotiate them just by telling them I am a good student. Uh, I can manage all the courses and the exam. My target was just to complete my high school regardless of the results. I already lost my uh, hope of scoring top at the time when the school interrupted. Now years are counting and uh, I become far and far from education. 
So I reduced my interest into just completing high school. I limit my interest to that. And then the officials were worried about my situation when they get the, the detailed information and they allowed me to register, learn via distance, and sit for the Ethiopian School Living Certificate Examination. That's the end of high school. After five years, in 1995, of the interruption of the school, after five years. So I studied at home, I studied at workplace, I studied anywhere. Whenever I move, I'm reading like this. I'm carrying a girl, and I'm, I'm, I'm reading my exercise books. Um, and then uh, I finished the classes, the formalities. I sat for the exam and completed my high school in May 1995, after the five years. I was a natural sciences student, despite diverted into social science after that. And I scored straight B with one A. So that was really the top result for me. In my uh, bachelor, um, B.A. degree in economics, I scored 3.94, 9.7 I mean. In my career school, I scored 3.67, but I love this result. Because I remember the, the, the situation in which I was working, I was studying and uh, sat for the exam. Being within that uh, difficult situation, scoring uh, straight B and uh, 1A was uh, uh, an extraordinary for me. I didn't wonder for the 3.97 of the bachelor. I wonder for this one. And then um, what happened next? Subsequently uh, passing the entrance exam, I joined the Ethiopian Civil Service College. Now it has been uh, uh, upgraded into university level in November 1995. After graduating uh, from high school, I joined the college. And I attended a number of economics courses for three intensive years and succeeded with a cumulative GPA of 3.94. Uh, In May 1998. Due to these academic uh, performances, the regional state I was serving, that's the Amhara National Regional State, it appointed me as the director of the Regional Management Institute, just after the graduation from the uh, bachelor, which was established primarily to train leaders from uh, various administrative challenges, including at the regional level, we call zonal level, that's the county, and that's uh, lower level. So the objective and the mission of the management institute that I was assigned as a director was to train leaders. So I was a trainer there, trying to train, I trained myself. I learned from a uh, number of people, from the interactions, from policy dealings, the purpose of the management institute, sort of that. So I learned lots of things from that. And I worked for about only five months in that institute. And then, being inspired by my efforts and my uh, startings, the regional state gave me the chance to attend KDI school. Okay? So after, after completing my high school, there is no that much barrier to come to KDI school. I worked only for five months in the management institute. And then I joined KDI school. After five months of uh, my official work, I joined KDI school in March 1999. At KDI school, I attended this 
courses, 11 courses. Dr. Song Chang was uh, my colleague in a class. We were together, that person. Very fantastic opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, I attended the classes of uh, very distinguished professors. I remember, I never forget them. Understanding the global economy was uh, given by Professor Jong Il Yu. I didn't see him today. Korean economic development, Professor Nam. Policy reform in the global economy, Professor Ju Huli. It was given by him. Introduction to international trade, Professor Moon Jung Cha. I attended also a technology and economic growth course. But I forget the name of this professor. Sorry for that. <laughs> Fortunately, he gave me A plus. I never forget that. <laughs> and also I attended legal and, legal and institutional issues in the world trading system given by Professor Moon Jung Cha. Applied econometrics. Economics of developing policies, lessons from Pacific Rim economic, economics from Professor Kim. Yusung. And I remember this person. I didn't see him here uh, in this uh, gathering. Maybe my professors are not uh, around today. Okay. Uh, industrial policy and international competitiveness, Professor Daniel Piracha. Managerial economics for public and private policy sectors, Professor Yun Yu. Attended these courses. And uh, I did uh, uh, fulfill the thesis requirement for the Master of Arts in Public Policy and uh, Economics. In the 2000 uh, Congregation Ceremony, Kerry High School invited also me and I attended the ceremony. We were seven in number in total, but I was invited again. I don't know why I was invited, really. I don't know the criteria. Anyway, I'm very happy. KDI School always standing beside me. It supported, it inspired me for objectives, and it worked out. So uh, throughout my successes, the contribution of KDI School takes also a huge portion. Hoping the, the possibility of rep, re, re, replicating the Korean industrialization outward orientation in Amhara region, I was assigned as, as I told you, as the director of the Management Institute to train, teach leaders of uh, various levels. And uh, I was assigned also as deputy head of Trade and Industry Bureau. And uh, as a Deputy Managing Director of a Foundation for Philanthropic Investment Center in the same region, and Head of the Secretariat Office of the Leading Political Party. We call it NDM, the Ethiopians know this. I was also heading the Secretariat Office of that political party. And uh, I have also served as Central Committee member, Executive Committee member for uh, successive uh, years before uh, going to my PhD study and after returning back home. And Head of Trade and, Indust Trade and uh, Industry Development Bureau of the second largest region, that is of the Amhara region. And that provided me uh, the opportunity of translating my mind into practical actions of investment promotion, industrial expansion, and uh, tradable production. These were the lessons I took from KDI School. The rapid economic growth of Korean economy uh, with uh, a declining income inequality. Professor uh, Nam taught us like this. The miraculous economic growth of Korea is explained in two, by, by, by these two features. Rapid growth with declining income inequality. When I go deep and deep into economics, I found these two are very critical 
segments of economics and economic growth. So I learned a lot from the Korean miraculous economic uh, growth in particular, and in general from the well-to-do uh, economists of Southeast Asian economies. So I tried to convert or translate into action in that region by involving in investment promotion, export promotion, industrialization, industrial expansion. Of course, it is at, in, at its infant stage, but, but we, are, we are trying our best to follow this uh, model. And my PhD and the accompanying challenges. There is also a story, bad story here. After serving for about eight years, after graduating from Kerry High School, as explained and introduced before, I went to the UK for my PhD and joined the University of Kent at Canterbury. It is uh, about 50 miles away from London. So uh, my background is uh, from the bureaucracy side. I am working in office. I am working with the people. I am a bit far from the academic. Okay, so um, I turn it back to study. That's a new orientation toward this research. I have to go deep into econometrics. Macroeconometrics, the most difficult part, I challenge it and it challenged me. I suffered, but I succeeded. So um, I attended a one-year coursework. Accompanying with the successful completion of the one-year coursework as Master of Science in International Finance and uh, Economic Development was awarded to me. And also, I won two scholarships at that time. I was too much frustrated, by the way, because I am from the bureaucracy side, okay? I am too far from the academic. So I couldn't cope up with the students. Conducting a research may be a, a, a very difficult one. It may not be easy as uh, standing in front of people and talking some, something. So I was, I was uh, frustrated. I worked hard, overperformed, and won two scholarships. The university covering my subsistence allowance and the graduate school, School of Economics, my tuition fee. Uh, but another challenge confronted me, and uh, you will be—I hope you will be eager to see what that, what this challenge, and uh, how it is uh, challenged as well or solved. So I will tell you the challenge, and the way I confronted the problem. As a student from uh, outside the EU, uh, additional tuition fee payments were required from my side. Uh, this was to be covered by my employer, by my government. Okay? Uh, I was also really sure for this to happen. My government will cover it. I was confident. Unfortunately, Things at home went wrong, and relations with a few higher officials, my colleagues, were deteriorated due to misunderstandings. Consequently, it was decided on me to stop the study and to return back to work. So, at that moment, I was very sad, annoyed, and confused. And uh, following that, my uh, brave decision is, and that uh, young students could learn from this is, I decided I will not stop my study. And I will not return back to work before completing my study. I decided like this. 
So I remained injured to continue my study and uh, confront all the obstructions I may face. I returned to the university from the vacation in my home country and continued my study. For the first three months, I was too much challenged by, I was warned several times. You didn't pay your tuition fee. You are an African student. You have to pay this much. Otherwise, you will be fired. You will be removed. My screen always, at the morning, it blinks like that. Warning, 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 warning. Really, I suffered a lot. And then I consulted my supervisor, PhD supervisor, to pay me in advance and then to deduct from my uh, monthly allowance. They, they arranged that. I paid that tuition fee. And then I get relieved. In spite of suffering from sense of being mishandled for the subsequent three years, the time of attending my PhD study, in addition to the intrinsic hardships of PhD study, you know, uh, Kidai School is now giving uh, PhD. So uh, some of you uh, could be attending PhD classes or conducting your researches, so you know the problems associated with PhD. Uh, yeah. Um, and also, I was not, as I told you, my academic background is uh, not supported through research or teaching like that. Uh, anyway, it was hard to conduct my uh, research. In any case, I did my uh, research, I completed it within two years. But according to the, the law and the uh, regulations of uh, the university, it was not possible to submit research before June 16 of the third year. Then I spent one additional year working on publications. I tried to uh, develop some chapters of uh, my research into publications, and uh, I published. At the time of my viva, my graduation, uh, about five of uh, the articles were published. So they supported me towards uh, convincing my examiners. They suggest that this could be um, changed into an article. It is a very good one. But I informed them it has been already published. So they become happy. So it was really uh, very successful. I was delighted at the time of my viva. The whole years I remember so the suffering, is, but the time of my viva I was uh, very happiest one. That was due to the conviction of the examiners. Um, the thesis was uh, about economic growth, international trade, and investments in sub Saharan Africa. Benchmarked to, to a block of Southeast Asian economies. 11 Southeast Asian economies were uh, brought into a block. And uh, what I was trying was to benchmark the performances of Southeast Asian, uh, Sub Saharan African countries. 44 in the sample against a block of 11 Southeast Asian countries. Just with an intention of learning from Southeast Asian experiences and replicating with some or more adjustments to replicate it in, in sub-Saharan African economies, particularly in investment promotion, in uh, trade, particularly breaking the export market, something like that, and managing FDI. So uh, I focused on that. And I learned a lot. That was due to the conviction of my, uh, um, the influence that KDI school uh, created on me. 
I took a very immense education and uh, I believed the experiences from Southeast Asian economies and uh, from uh, the Quran model would help Sub-Saharan African countries to uh, transform their economy to improve the lives of their people. So I did this benchmarking uh, uh, research with this intention. In any case, um, in spite of self, yeah, the one that I mentioned it before. Anyway, I successfully managed all the hardships and completed my PhD in November 2011. It was also followed by the nullification of uh, all the misunderstandings at home. We discussed everything at home with my colleagues, uh, officials, who decided to stop my uh, study and return back to work. I refused blatantly, no, it will never happen. And then after completing, I returned back home, sat down, discussed, resolved. This is their mistake. Don't do it for the others. This is the lesson we both gained from the process. This part, I suffered from that process. In any case, um, I myself visualized a pattern of uh, my life process as like, uh, I say, fight and go sort of pattern. From uh, my high school, it was interrupted, it was a difficult time. Now it is a good story to tell for the other people, but at that time it was really grief. In any case, I challenged the challenges, I succeeded. So, young people, students could learn from this. Challenge the challenges. That is uh, the advice, lastly, I uh, tried to, to. This is the second batch of my production. <laughs> <coughs> One after KDI, two after uh, UK. Just to summarize uh, my formal education, the Ethiopian civil service from the bottom, 3.94 out of a school of four, and then uh, what comes is uh, KDI School of Public Policy and Management. You have already written this at the time of uh, my appointment at the ministry, uh, Minister for the Ministry of uh, Construction. That's why I'm uh, bringing it into the screen. Otherwise, I should have hidden it. Um, at the University of Kent, Canterbury, I attended also the Master of Science. That is uh, a preparation towards uh, my PhD thesis in international finance and economic development. And uh, it, it was also complemented with research determinants of investment in Ethiopia. It was one of uh, the papers selected for publication, and it has been published. Uh, uh, it was a time series econometric uh, investigation, taking uh, 60 years data, time series data. So uh, my examiners and uh, interviewers liked this paper anyway. It has been published before my examination, and it helped me to bring out of the exam. And uh, my PhD thesis, Economic Growth Trade and Investment, as I, as I explained it before, Nexus and Determinantes, a benchmarking approach with 11 Southeast Asian economies. These are the journal articles. I did this while I was in the University of Kent. But after returning back to Ethiopia, I never tried one. I went back to the breakfast again. Uh, and these are also the working papers and the proceedings. One of uh, the last one, the Terminal of International Trade in Sub-Saharan Africa, it was a comparison with Southeast Asia. It was selected as top 10 research um, during that year. 
by Social Science Research Network. It's available online. Um, the others uh, are proceedings. And also my work experience. I have already uh, mentioned some of them. But uh, to give you uh, chronologically, first I was uh, recruited as a local community mobilizer just after the interruption of my high school. Okay? After joining the, the armed struggle, I was uh, working in the wing of the public mobilization side. So I served for a uh, number of years with this uh, officer, officership position. And then uh, I joined the, the Ethiopian Civil Service College. After the graduation, I served for the management institute of Amhara National Regional State, that is the second largest region of Ethiopia. And also, after returning back from KDI, I was also assigned as the director on the same position. I worked for about two years after that, training leaders and teaching myself, really. It was a two-way, um, mutually important uh, training. And then I was appointed as trade and industry deputy head. I worked only for three months. From that, I was taken to the uh, Secretariat Office of uh, the leading uh, party. I served for about four years there. Uh, it says ANDM Central Committee Office. And then uh, I served also for only three months as a deputy managing director of uh, a foundation. And then um, I was postponed to uh, Trade and Industry Bureau as the head. Um, my uh, only experience in teaching in UK, when I uh, was working my PhD, associated with uh, the scholarship the school granted me, I was teaching or serving as a, a teaching assistant. So I was trying to uh, teach uh, people from international uh, community, particularly those uh, from uh, European and the UK. I was really frustrated about my language. Are they hearing me? And some of the students, I came here from uh, somewhere to learn from uh, English people. They say like this. But an African came and uh, instructed me. They see, say like this. I resist all these problems. I and I uh, continued teaching as an assistant. Anyway, I gauge the the attitudes of uh, some few students from this perspective. In any case, that is the only my experience in teaching. That is uh, the point I would like. To mention. And also, after uh, uh, completing my PhD, I uh, returned back home and uh, assigned as the executive director of uh, one local NGO. It, was, it is called the uh, Organization for Rehabilitation and Development in Amhara. After serving for two years, <coughs> sorry, I was also uh, taken into another position to serve as Vice President of the Regional State and uh, Head of the Bureau of Industry and Urban Development. My urban development experience is uh, that it started from this office. I worked for about two years and then uh, that is the experience counted on my side and uh, it gave me an argument to be the Minister for the existing for my existing position, the Minister of uh, Urban Development and Housing. Last year, uh, I was assigned in October, uh, last year, October, I was assigned as the Minister of uh, 
Ministry of Construction. I worked for one year. And uh, previously, I was working under, uh, when I was in uh, the region, I was working at the subordinate of uh, the Ministry of uh, Urban Development and Housing. This year, the Minister for uh, uh, Minister of Urban Development and Housing moved into KAIST for his PhD. Then I moved and sat down on that chair. Uh, to be honest, uh, may you know, Atomo Korea yeah. is now in uh, KAIST attending his PhD courses. And he told me that he's confronting the same problem coming from bureaucracy, coming from offices, and now he is fighting against courses. I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah, I hope he will succeed. In any case, now uh, from October 2016, that means uh, it is, it is uh, uh, within the last three weeks, not more than three weeks. I was taken to uh, the Ministry of Urban Development and Housing. I started already communicating with KDI School. I am working at the Minister for the Ministry of Construction, but it has been taken by uh, another body. It is a lady. She is a lady. An engineer lady has taken the ministry. And I moved into the Ministry of Urban Development and uh, Housing. In any case, we do have... Uh, sorry. Uh, very challenging tasks to the Louis. I would like to urge KDI School to work with me uh, to, to tackle the housing problems. When you come to KDI School, I was uh, looking at the apartments. How can I re replicate this housing to Ethiopia? <laughs> so, my mind was uh, just asking this lots of times. And I was also asking Mr. Kim to explain how uh, these buildings are built, who owns them, like this, like that. In any case, my successes are the success of uh, KDI School. I talked so much, really. Uh, I had uh, a number of opportunities of uh, policy dialogues. I was uh, really one of the forefront to, in explaining the Southeast Asian experiences and uh, the Korean model. So how can we bring the policy implications and the policy lessons from uh, the successful economic performances of Southeast Asian and, uh, countries and the Korean model? The core is the Korean model, by the way. Our leaders, former leaders, existing leaders are convinced that the Korean model, we have to follow the Korean model. The Taiwan, the Singapore, the Hong Kong, like city states or small states. Korea is a large country. So we could have lots of things to learn from its experiences. <coughs> With this intention, the leaders, top leaders, at the time when we were in KDI, the Prime Minister has, had arranged this program, by the way. Before, uh, before we joined KDI School, our late Prime Minister visited Korea, arranged the program with KDI School. So when the KDI School started its uh, class in 1998, there were three Ethiopian students, and we were the second batch. Now, lots of Ethiopians, lots of Africans, and other international students are flowing to KDI school. Now, it is growing over time. And the, signed, the, the size, uh, perhaps 10 times or eight, more than eight times the size of KDI in terms of uh, student population. It grew toward this, is, I think. Um, in any case, it is our conviction that um, Korean experiences are worthy for our uh, endeavor. We are working really very hard. 
were trying and uh, were succeeding for the last uh, few years, we registered a double digit growth, 11% growth, despite the wide ranging poverty in the country. We are, we are really performing very nice. And we convinced our people, we can grow. We can eradicate poverty. So we are working very hard to generate employment, to um, incubate micro and small enterprises, medium and uh, large size industrial uh, uh, factories, infrastructural developments while working very hard. And in the housing area, we did also a very good uh, experience. Uh, however, still, uh, we need to use cost-reducing technologies. Uh, and at the same time, that could improve the quality of housing. In any case, this has been um, explained at the very beginning of uh, the, the session. I have also served uh, uh, as board member of various universities, board chairman of different institutions, as uh, mentioned here. And now, at the moment, I am also serving as the chairman of uh, Addis Ababa Science and Technology University. It is uh, expected to be the leading university in the country. So I need to bridge a relationship between KDI, KAIST, and uh, Addis Ababa Science and Technology University so that ideas could be exchanged and uh, this uh, emerging university could learn from the immense experiences of Korean universities. I'm also serving as the board chairman of the Ethiopian Construction uh, Corporation. Uh, while I was in the Ministry of Construction, of course. So when I moved to the Ministry of Urban Development, uh, that lady will take this chairman, this chairmanship. I afraid. And also, I am serving as a member of the Investigative Congress of the Ethiopian Constitutional Affairs, as a board member of the Ethiopian Railway Corporation. I served at such positions. In conclusion, for the young uh, students, my lesson to tell you, challenge the challenges. Don't be twisted by the challenges. Confront the challenges. You will uh, face something we don't know. That is the source of strength as well. So that is the, the, the lesson I can give you for today. And Kerya is cool taught me that to be a problem solver at, at, at that time, at that time, before 16 years, to be a troubleshooter and to be a pioneer. Did I attempt to do that? This is a question for you. Thank you so much.